Today on Munson Made This, it's all about beans. Brian Little. <laughs> Today's video is, I guess, kind of different. I feel like I start so many videos with saying how this video is different, but um, I had intended this week to do a Kardashian brownie recipe, uh, which I ended up testing ahead of time and had miserable failure. So that's coming a little bit later, probably next week. So instead, I decided to give you a bit of a tutorial on how I like to make beans and how I think um, you can perfectly cook beans at home. Um, I've been playing around with cooking them on a stove top, with cooking them in the Instant Pot, with soaking them overnight, with cooking them from dry. And I think I have found the perfect combination of soaking and cooking. And uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that and then give you some ideas of what you can do with those beans. So um, let's go ahead and meet at the sink over here and I will show you the first step to my bean tutorial. As I said here, I've been trying to find the perfect combination of soaking and using dry, and I find that the one hour quick soak method is the best. Now, one hour doesn't sound like a quick soak, but the other alternative to soaking is to soak them overnight, and that's definitely not quick. So what you do is you take a pot like this, fill it with water, bring that water to a boil, add your beans. So in here I have a cup and a half of dry kidney beans. And then you basically just put a lid on it, set it off to the side and let it hang out for an hour. And um, let me drain them here and I'll show you the size difference. Um, also, I am draining this water because it has, um, well, it's not very good. It's discolored. And a lot of people were criticizing my last video where I, or not my last video, but the, the, the video where I made um, oat milk about draining the water and rinsing it. And this one, you really definitely want to discard that water that it was soaking in um, busy, because it's pulled out a lot of stuff from the beans that you, that you don't want um, that could possibly make you a little bit gassy. So um, the beans are drained here and I'm actually going to rinse them once or twice just to remove any extra stuff. So as I was kind of saying back there at the sink that the quick soak does quite a few things. It gets them prepared for cooking. Uh, it makes them so that they're going to cook nice and uniform. So um, if you've ever tried to cook beans from straight dry beans, you'll find that some of them are overcooked, some of them are undercooked. So doing this quick soaking kind of just evens out that process. Additionally, pulls out a bunch of stuff from the beans that you don't necessarily want that could cause you some gas and indigestion. But the beans here um, are a little bit plumped up. They're by no means even remotely close to being cooked. Um, but I just wanna show you a little bit of a size comparison here so you can see exactly how much they have actually plumped up in that water. These ones over here are the ones that have been soaking for an hour in that hot water. And these are the ones that are still dry. You can see they've almost doubled in size. Today we are going to be cooking these beans in the Instant Pot, and I think this is just a really great way to cook the beans a little bit quicker. You could do this on the stove top, but it'll probably take about twice as long. And uh, the pressure cooker is just really nice because I do feel like just the, the pressure itself does help to just really force the, the liquid into those beans. So here I have the cup and a half that was soaked, and it's just going in here into the Instant Pot. And then I'm going to fill this with water just above the beans until when I stick my finger in there, the water comes up to the first knuckle of my finger. So let's start adding water. You can see here that I need quite a bit more water. So I'm just going to add some more. This is filtered water, by the way. Let's test it a little more. Add just a bit more and looks like we are exactly there. Our beans as they are now are just a completely blank canvas. I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but they were soaked in salted water. Uh, if you did want to avoid salt, you don't have to add the salt at that point, but right now we have them in fresh water again, so there's no seasoning. 
Again, if you wanted to keep those salt free, just go ahead and cook them as they are. But I like to season mine up at least with salt. Sometimes I like to add other flavors. If I know that I'm gonna be using the beans and say tacos or burritos, I might add some taco seasoning or cumin or chili powder to them to kind of spice it in that direction. If I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing with those beans, I'm gonna be adding them to salads or just with some beans and rice, I may just add other things like onions, garlic, and then a bunch of seasoning. So today, these pinto beans, I'm just gonna kind of season them up with a bunch of different random things. Um, but the key is that we want to taste the water before we start cooking them. And you want it to be like a delicious broth or like a soup because all that flavor is going to go into those beans. So if the liquid is flavorful, the beans are gonna be flavorful. So let's start adding some stuff in. I'm just gonna start adding things here in this leftover bitch and sauce container. I have some onions just left over from the night before adding those in. I'm also going to add some garlic. Regardless of what I'm gonna be seasoning them for, I do like to add onion and a pretty hefty amount of garlic. Don't be scared of garlic. I also like to add some Bragg's liquid aminos. This is good for salt and just adds a good umami to the beans. I have some, why am I so spacey today? Uh, I have some bay leaves here that I'm just gonna add got some crumbs, but they'll still work. Just make sure to remove those at the end. So a few bay leaves in there. Um, the last video I made was for the Hemingway burger and I bought this Beaumont seasoning and I'm actually kind of obsessed with it. So I'm gonna add some of that in there. It's just kind of like a sugar, salt, spice blend. Some red pepper flake. Um, I do have some garlic and onion powders here as well. Throw those in. Again, we really want to get this water nice and seasoned, full of flavor, because that's what's going to flavor the beans. Some paprika. This is smoked paprika, by the way. And what am I missing? Some pepper. A bit of salt. And I'm gonna stir this up and Check for seasoning. I do have the uh, better than bouillon out here. I'm not actually gonna add this today, but um, if you just kind of wanted to shortcut a lot of these seasonings, you could just go ahead and use this. But um, I think that the combination of seasonings and flavors I have here um, create a nice broth without using that, but this is a nice shortcut. So let's stir this up here and uh, taste it for seasoning. I'm gonna give this a taste before I turn it on, just to make sure that again, the salt levels are great and that it's got some nice flavor because again, what's in this liquid is what's gonna be in the beans. I actually think it's perfect. It's salty enough. It's got enough seasoning. The onion and garlic will release into the broth a, a little bit more um, as well as the bay leaves. So I think it's perfect. I'm ready to turn it on and let these beans cook. I have my Instant Pot plugged in. Placing the lid on, and we're going to select the manual function and bring it down to 25 minutes. This is the perfect time for pinto beans. Uh, and while these cook, I will talk a little bit about some variables with other types of beans. While my pinto beans cook in the Instant Pot, I just wanna review the directions here. Uh, if you don't wanna write them down as I talk, there will be a link below to my website where I will have the directions listed out. But we soak the beans from dry in hot salted water for one hour. We drain them, rinse them, put them into the Instant Pot with enough water just to come up above the beans until it was at our first knuckle. And then we seasoned it to taste, making sure that the broth was nice and flavorful because that is what is flavoring the beans. Now, the 25 minute time that I have here on the pinto beans is pretty standard for things like kidney beans, for black beans, um, cannellini beans might need a few extra minutes. Uh, but the general rule is to set the, set the timer on there for 25 minutes, let it go, quick release, taste them. If they're still a little bit al dente, still got a little bit of grit, go ahead and put the lid back on, set the timer for five more minutes and let them go. One bean that does need a little bit more time uh, are garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Now I cook these in the same fashion, soak them for an hour, rinse them. I didn't really season these too much because I want to use these for hummus or other dishes where I don't want them to be too flavored in any one direction. But garbanzo beans or chickpeas take about 35 minutes to cook in the Instant Pot. What I would suggest doing though is to set the timer for 30 minutes and then to test them after that if they aren't complete or they're not done. 
um, then go ahead and put the lid back on, set it for five more minutes and let them cook. But in my experience, they do take a little bit longer. So these actually take 45 minutes or so. I know the timer is set for 25 minutes, but by the time it comes up, comes up to temperature and comes up to pressure, uh, it's a total of probably about 45 minutes. So as soon as those are done, I will quick release it with you and we'll give them a taste, make sure they're done. And I'll give you some ideas of what you can do with these beans. Smells so good. It is time for the big reveal and to test and make sure that these beans are done. Now, one thing I didn't talk about before when we were seasoning is you really do want to avoid any type of seasoning that has acid. So lemon juice, vinegar, tomatoes, those will actually make the skins a little bit uh, firmer and more difficult for them to absorb water and it'll take a lot longer. So if you wanna make chili or something out of these beans, you wanna add those tomatoes and stuff after this cooking process when you go on to the next step. So stirring these up here and we have pinto beans. Now, one way to check to see if beans are done is the blow test and uh, you blow on the beans and the skins kind of shrivel and blow in the wind a little bit. So let's see. So let's talk about eating them because these are perfectly done. Now, my favorite way to eat them is to just eat them like this if I've seasoned them up just to be eaten as such. And so I just like to ladle a bit into a bowl and you don't want to get rid of this broth. You want to save this broth. It is delicious. Um, and I like to add just a little bit of olive oil for flavor. And the last thing here is a bit of hot sauce. Here I have just some crystal. And this is just a delicious way to eat these pinto beans. And you can do this with kidney beans, black beans, just a really simple way to enjoy the beans. Now, if you want to save these beans and you want to be making sort of your own canned beans, here I have those chickpeas I showed you earlier. They are in a freezer jar. Um, you want to make sure that you put the beans in with their liquid. This can go directly into the freezer. They'll freeze perfectly, they'll thaw perfectly. You wanna obviously do that in the fridge for like a day or two or on the counter, however you like to thaw your beans, but they do um, save really well in the freezer. If you're planning on using them quite soon, um, you can just make your own canned beans to save in the fridge. And uh, I'm gonna do that really quick here with these jars, plastic lid. Um, rearrange myself. Just go ahead and use a slotted spoon and fill up a jar. A jar this size is about the same amount that you would get in a can. And then you want to top it off with the liquid. This just helps them stay nice and flavorful while they are in the fridge. And just let them cool to at least room temperature before you actually put them in the fridge which is not a good idea that I'm holding a hot jar full of liquid right now. But there you go. So we have beans ready for the freezer, beans ready for the fridge, and beans ready to eat. So like I said, all the instructions for these will be on my website with the link below. Really simple, just that quick soak for an hour, 25 minutes in the Instant Pot, test them, see if they're done. And if they are, you move on. If not, throw them back in for five more minutes or so test them again. If you can't do the quick release, if some way, for, for, some, uh, for some reason you're gonna be away uh, when they finish, they'll be okay doing a slow release or a natural pressure release. They won't overcook too much. Um, in fact, they may even, it may even help you out if you find the beans are a little bit al dente before by doing a natural release might actually help to make them a little bit softer. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching this little tutorial. Don't really have a recipe, but if you do follow me on Instagram, I will be posting every day this week um, a picture of the food that I am eating with these beans. So I'll be making some black beans. I already have some kidney beans in the fridge as well as some cannellini beans. I have these pinto beans. So I'll be showing you on Instagram at months and made this everything that I make with these beans. I'm obsessed with this cooking technique. It works so perfectly. It's better than using dry. It's better than having to soak for 24 hours. It's just the best of both worlds. So thank you for watching. 
If you plan on making these beans, let me know how you want to season these and uh, how you like to use your beans. If you're gonna be using garbanzo beans for hummus, or if you're going to be using pinto beans or kidney beans for things like tacos or burritos, just let me know in the comments below how you plan on using these beans. Thank you all again for watching. Uh, links below to Patreon as well as my PayPal account if you do want to send me a little bit of a tip or assistance to help keep this channel going. Thank you to all of the new subscribers. I'm just over 9,000 right now. Can't wait to hit 10K. Just keep going up from there. So have a great week. I will see you next time with a brand new recipe. Hopefully it's one of the celebrity recipes that I teased before. Um, hopefully I can get that right for the next recipe video. So thanks again. Have a great week. I'll see you next time. Thank you.